as you know, this is my fifth report to the General Assembly since I have been appointed Special Rapporteur on Torture in 2004. Um, and I always, in principle, pick the topics I am dealing with uh, myself um, and always try to focus on different topics. In the beginning, it was very much terrorism and, uh, and torture, uh, corporal punishment, uh, then certain groups uh, like uh, women and torture or um, persons with disabilities, drug addicts, um, so different topics. And this time, I felt on the basis of my experience with um, <coughs> 15 missions to different countries and different regions of the world um, <clears throat> that I would like to focus on conditions of detention in general, on the forgotten prisoners. Um, when I assumed the mandate, I knew that torture is practiced in quite a high number of countries, some more widespread or even systematic than in others, but it is a global phenomenon. But I did not expect that the conditions of detention are that bad as they are. Uh, and that's why one of my recommendations is that time has come to actually draft and adopt the United Nations Convention on the rights of detainees. So as we have other conventions on particularly vulnerable groups, we have a convention on the rights of the child, we have a convention on the rights of persons with disabilities, and. Uh, and other specialized treaties um, and uh, persons deprived of their liberty, whether they are now in police custody, in pretrial detention, convicted prisoners, or whether they are aliens awaiting deportation or minors who are locked up, um, they, are, they are particularly vulnerable. And um, in, in, in so many countries, the states are not living up to their obligations to respect the basic dignity of human beings in detention. Uh, just to give you a few examples, uh, altogether we have some 10,000 persons deprived of liberty, uh, sorry, 10 million persons deprived of liberty, um, and my guess is that um, definitely the clear majority of them have to be in conditions uh, that are violating their human dignity. Many people told me, <clears throat> of course, uh, because I go into a detention facility and ask them, can you tell me your experiences? Have you been subjected to torture? They say, yeah, yeah, I have been subjected to torture. At the beginning by the police, they extracted a confession from me. Uh, that was painful, that was tough. But if I compare it to what I experienced afterwards, because they extracted a confession from me, and on the basis of this confession, I have then been, by a corrupt judiciary, I have then been convicted of a, of a certain crime. I spent quite a long time in pretrial detention, but I'm spending so much time in inhuman prison conditions. I have to fight for the most basic needs, for instance, food. In many countries, Governments just do not consider it as their responsibility to provide detainees with food. It's the responsibility of the families. If you have a family that can provide you every day with food, it works. If you are a foreigner, if you are poor, and you don't have the family that can afford to bring you the food every day, you might starve, or you might try to get food from other detainees in exchange for whatever kind of often slavery-like services, sexual services and other services. You are on the lowest, the poor are really at the, at the bottom of the prison hierarchy. Uh, medical services. Again, many, many governments say this is not our responsibility. It's the families who should bring medicine and take care of uh, the right to health of uh, detainees. Uh, many prisons are overcrowded, filthy, um, there's no l privacy, no possibility, uh, even very often you don't have any kind of toilets. I have seen in Equatorial Guinea, for instance, that people spend a long time in police detention 
um, which is usually meant for 24, perhaps 48 hours. There were months there, nothing, just a concrete floor, overcrowded. Sometimes they had to sleep in shifts. The families is bringing uh, the water in a bottle, which they afterwards use for urinating, or they bring plastic bags with food, which they afterwards have to use for defecating, because there is just no toilet available. And then they throw it all out through the bars. Uh, you can imagine the hygienic conditions. And this is not just Equatorial Guinea. This is something I found in many, many countries. The second part is really focusing on children in detention, which are an even more vulnerable group. Uh, there's about one uh, million children, and that's a conservative estimate, in detention, although the Convention on the Rights of the Child is very, very clear in saying that detaining children should only be an exceptional measure, a measure of last resort if everything else fails to achieve a certain purpose, and it should be only for the shortest possible time. But in reality, uh, very often, even if children are accused of minor crimes, having stolen something, etc., they end up often for a prolonged period of time in pretrial detention. In many countries, the age of criminal liability is very low, eight years, nine years. I found really children of this age uh, who spend in pretrial detention accused of certain crimes, but also, of course, in children's homes, etc. Uh, so the right to personal liberty is a very important human right and is not taken uh, seriously enough by, by many governments, and children are particularly also vulnerable to corporal punishment. Very often it's a regular uh, sanction for even minor infractions of, uh, of the prison discipline that children are more often than adults subjected to beatings and really institutionalized corporal punishment uh, or in dark cells, etc. They also are more vulnerable to interprisoner violence, both by adults and by children, uh, also sexual, sexually being misused, etc. Um, so the point that I'm making that uh, I think to have a prison to be behind closed doors means that people are locked up in order not to escape, but at the same time it has the function also to lock society out. Most people have no idea how life behind bars looks in reality. And uh, the purpose of my report this year is to draw government's attention, but also the public at large, the media, to the plight of the forgotten prisoners all around the world. And I'm not only talking about the poor countries in Africa, Asia, and Latin America, I'm talking also about prison conditions in the north, in particular if you speak about uh, prison condition of aliens waiting deportation, illegal immigrants, asylum seekers, etc.